Proverbs chapter number 23. Thank you, all the singers, the choir, and thank you for being here tonight. And uh, Proverbs chapter number 23. Remember a husband, and I began to come to church here, and he said, Pastor, is it possible that uh, me and my wife come and uh, would like to talk to you? I'd like to get some counsel. And his wife had never been to church here before. And I said, sure, you just tell me a time and uh, we'll meet here and we'll talk. And uh, came together and began to spend some time with them. And the husband began to look at his wife and began to plead with his wife about their relationship. And uh, began to plead, I, I want our marriage to work. I, I want us to be together. And his wife had that blank stare. There was a blank stare. And it went on, I think, for 45 uh, minutes to an hour, uh, just talking. And at the very end, and I said, ma'am, you know, he's asked you, he wants this marriage to work. And you know, according to the Bible, that's the right thing. Amen. It's the right thing. Marriage is good. And, uh, but after all, after it was all said and she done, she looked over and said, I'm just not interested. And you know, that breaks your heart. It breaks your heart. But you look at that, the, the husband did not have his wife's heart. He could talk all he wants about the marriage, but for some reason, I don't know why, but he did not have his wife's heart. I remember a friend of mine a long time ago, he was making a major decision in his life and it was a very hasty decision and there was a battle inside of me whether I should talk to him or not and about the relationship with, his, with the Lord and, and you know, I went to him and I decided I'm going to talk to him and I remember it was after a church service, we went out to the side of the church and I began to discuss him but, but the truth is I say I was a friend. But in truth, I, I really hadn't been a good friend to him in a long time. And I didn't have his heart. And I began to talk with him. I begged with him. I pleaded with him. I shared with him the scripture. And we talked about the difficult situations he was going through. And he listened, but he had that blank stare. And in the end, when the conversation was over, he just did what he wanted to do. And in truth, I, I was his friend, but I, I was a friend that didn't have his heart. And this passage of scripture is about a father speaking to his son. He's begging with them. He's pleading with them. And you'll notice as we read this, he asks his son, give me thine heart. Give me thine heart. Let's stand for the reading of God's word. We're going to read Proverbs chapter 23 verses 19 through 28. I'll read verse 19. We'll read every other verse. Hear thou my son. Hear, do you see that? Hear thou my son and be wise and guide thine heart in the way. Be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Buy the truth, and sell it not, also wisdom, and instruction, and understanding. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice, and he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bear thee shall rejoice. My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways, for a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. She also lieth in wait as for a prey, and increaseth the transgressors among men. You read this, it is a father. It's have a conversation with his son, and it's a one-sided conversation right here. And he's saying, my son, hear, hear thou, my son. Listen to me, son. I've got some instructions for you, son. And he gets to the latter part, verse 26, and he, he says these important words. My son, give me thine heart. My son, give me thine heart. The title of the message this evening is Give Me Thine Heart. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And uh, Lord, I thank you for a church, a church full of people 
who love you, that love your word. And Lord, we're looking for answers tonight. I believe there are some parents who think, need to think about their children. They love their children. Uh, they want to instruct their children, but the parents don't have their children's heart. And I pray that you help them to think about that. Help them to somehow be able to get their children's or their child's heart. And then, Lord, we're all children of you if we've trusted you as our Savior, Lord. And, Lord, you want our heart. And I pray tonight that we think about it. Do you have our heart? And if not, I pray that some people make some decisions to give you their heart. We love you, Lord. We need you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Give me thine heart. You know, as a dad, by the way, if you're a parent, you can probably relate to this. You watch your children grow up. And as they get a little bit older, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, they begin to make decisions. And you realize there's coming a day when they're going to be on their own. They're going to be out of the house and they make decisions. And you know, because in your life, you've made decisions. You can look back in your past when you've made decisions that have dramatically altered your life. And you can see some things that maybe your child does not see. You know some things that maybe your child does not understand. And you begin to look at their life and their decisions that they're making or about to make. And that conversation you have with them and you begin to beg with them. And you know, I've thought about that. I've had many of those conversations and I've even watched some of my children at periods of time begin to go down the wrong path. And I know that through the years I've prayed, I, I beg the Lord, Lord, help them to see, help me to communicate. And then the time comes when the talk happens. And often it's in my car late at night and it goes from nine to 10 and 10 to 11, 11 to 12. And I've had many of those. Amen, John, you know, you've been there. Uh, my son or my daughter listens and they think and then they make a decision. And I thank God when the end result and comes, comes back, when all of a sudden they begin to think and they come back and say, Dad, you know, I thought about it and I see that. And they make a U-turn in a direction. And, and a lot of that comes down to having their heart or not having their heart. So it's important, the first point right here, parents, we should want our children's heart, not just their obedience. Praise God for children, obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. And a motto of my household is children, obey right away. And praise God for a child who obeys. However, come I've had 12 children and uh, there's many times I've uh, given them a command and they turn away with that look. You know the look, maybe parent. They're gonna obey you what you say, but inside their heart, does not like it, and there's an attitude in their heart. And you know, the obedience is there, but the heart is far from me as a parent. And you know, we as parents, we should want our children's heart. Give me thine heart. Give me thine heart. Give me thine heart. We don't just want obedience, amen. We desperately want our child's heart. In this book of Proverbs, wow, hear thou my son. You can almost feel the emotion. He can almost see that the father looks down and he says, my son, my son, give me thine heart. By the way, I remember growing up, I had an uncle and I remember visiting him and he had some boys and I, I'll never forget uh, the boys. He, he was an uncle that demanded obedience. And by the way, his children would obey and I remember one time going out to the front and he had his boys lined up and he took this horse whip and he began to beat my cousins. I'll never forget that right there. And he had their obedience, but I know my uncle never had their heart. And the result years later was not good. And the point being, you can have your child's obedience, but if you don't have their heart, there's a problem right around the corner. Husband, if you don't have your wife's heart, there's a problem waiting around the corner. Hey, wife, if you don't have your husband's heart, there's a problem waiting right around the corner. Now, number two, 
one way to have your child's heart is to spend a lot of quality of time with them. And, and this is an important point too. Uh, one way to have your, their, your child's heart is to spend a whole lot of quality time with them. Can I repeat that just one more time? Uh, one way you, you can get your child heart is somehow, some way, some form, some fashion is to spend a whole lot of quality time with your child. Have you ever read the book of Proverbs? Whoa, what a book. Now I want you to go with me, turn to Proverbs chapter one. And you're gonna see a common theme here. This dad obviously spends a whole lot of time uh, in a relationship, quality time, quality time with his son. Look at Proverbs chapter number one, verse eight. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Look at verse 10. My son, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Look at verse 15. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. Look at the next chapter, Proverbs chapter two, verse number one. You can almost hear the emotion in the father's uh, voice. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee. Proverbs chapter three, if you will. Look at Proverbs chapter three, verse number one. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Look at chapter three, verse 11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. Verse 21, my son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Proverbs chapter four, if you will. Proverbs chapter four, verse number 10. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Look at verse number 20. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. We're gonna go further, but just think about this. Just in those first four chapters, what a conversation. What passion that the father has for his son. He's begging, he's pleading, he's obviously spending a whole lot of quality time with his son, guiding him, directing him, pleading with him to live for Jesus. By the way, part of the problem of not having somebody's heart is not enough time spent with them. Quality time together. You know, this continues on. Chapter five, if you will. Verse number one. My son, my son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding. Look at verse number 20. And why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? Chapter number six, verse number one. My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger. Look at chapter six, verse three. Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself when thou art come into the hand of thy friend. Go humble thyself and make sure thy friend. Verse 20. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Now. I know we're, we're getting the point. My son, my son, my son, my son, my son, my son. We were looking at this because it's important for you to realize this was a lot of quality time. Quality time together. I'm gonna to come back to this, but I remember a pastor I spoke to and I noticed how he raised his children for the Lord. And I said, how did that happen? How are your children living for the Lord? He says, well, listen, I keep, I'm faithful to church, go to Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and uh, we don't miss, but I also spend a whole lot of time with my children, quality time with my children, training them, teaching them, and I love my children and they know it, and I instruct them and I spend lots of quality. And he said, you know what you can do? If you ever get to the point, he said this to me, he said, if you ever get to the point where you see yourself losing your, your son or your daughter's heart, he says, you know what? go get you a boat and go out fishing. You know, you get on that boat and you go out fishing, they can't go anywhere. And you know, you just spend that time on that boat and talk with them and spend time discussing things and uh, talking about life. It's not about the fishing, but it's a quality time that you can spend talking to them and trying your best to get their heart back. 
Look at chapter 7, if you will. Verse number 1. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Go all the way, fast forward to Proverbs chapter 19. We'll skip ahead to Proverbs chapter 19. Proverbs chapter number 19. Look at verse number 27. The passion, cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causeth to err from the words of knowledge. By the way, can I just say, by the way, we're all sinners. Well, you, you can raise your children in a Christian home and you can raise them in a wonderful Bible-believing church, but, you know, inside of their heart, oh, boy, there is a, a sin nature inside of them. They have the flesh, and if they don't learn to walk after the Spirit, they'll live a life walking in the flesh. And just because you have a Christian home and you go to a good Bible-believing church doesn't mean your children are going to turn out perfectly. Boy, you need to have their heart. They begin to go the different direction. You begin to try to instruct them. You try to guide them, spend quality time with them. Proverbs chapter 23, if you will. My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice even mine. Do you remember this is where we began? Verse number 19. My, uh, hear thou my son and be wise. And then verse 26. My son, give me thine heart. Give me thine heart. Give me thine heart. Parents, can I beg and plead with you? Some way, some form, some fashion. Get your child's heart. Hey, don't just get their obedience. Get their heart. Boy, it's not just about them obeying. Boy, you want inside, back of that obedience, a heart that loves you, a heart that cares for you, a heart that wants to please you. And somehow, some way, some form, some fashion, try to get their heart. Hey, wife, wife, oh, you want a good relationship with your husband. And maybe that relationship is severed and you don't have your husband's heart or your, you as a husband don't you have your wife's heart. Somehow, some way, some form, some fashion, look at where that heart was lost and try to repair that heart and beg and plead and go back and spend quality time caring for her or caring for him and beg and plead to get that heart back. Amen. I remember a, a man, boy, I remember talking to him. We were discussing our children, and uh, this is many, many years ago, and he said, you know, Pastor, I remember when my daughter, she got in her teenage years, and in some ways, I began to lose her heart, and she began to go off on a different direction, and she made a huge mistake. She got pregnant out of wedlock. And I couldn't believe that happened to me. My daughter, pregnant, not married, how did this happen? And then he began to talk with me what happened next. He said, you know, I had to take a time and realize that it was my fault. I didn't have her heart. I didn't help her. And he began to try to restore that relationship with her, love her, and try to get her heart back. And you fast forward, the story doesn't end there, praise the Lord. He told me the rest of the story about how through the years the Lord took and picked up those broken pieces and put them back together. And that dear lady, his daughter, is living for the Lord. Yes, she has some scars from sin like we all do. But she's living for the Lord, living for the Lord, and the dad has her heart. The point being is, listen, maybe your son or your daughter, maybe your husband or your wife has not done some things correctly. But that's not, don't let that be the end of the story. Don't let it be the end of the story. Somehow, some way, some form or fashion, try to get the heart, which leads to this next one. The Lord, our God, by the way, the Lord, our God, our God, he doesn't just want our obedience. He wants your heart. He wants my heart. And this is an awesome truth when you realize this. He doesn't just want your obedience. Uh, he wants your heart. Uh, go, go to Deuteronomy. We're going to spend some time in Deuteronomy. This is a phenomenal book in the Bible. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter number four. That good music the ladies sang, I think it like drifted you all to sleep. When they started doing that, ooh, 
Uh, some of you begin to go, ah, wake up, wake up. He said, pastor, I would if you had, if we, you had my heart. And so uh, I need to work on it. So the answer to that is longer sermons. Quality time. All right. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter number four, if you will. Look at verse number 29. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Once again, the Lord wants not just your obedience, he wants your heart, a heart that seeks him. Look at Deuteronomy chapter five, if you will. Turn to the next chapter. Deuteronomy chapter number five. And look at verse 29. Oh, this is, a, this, this is probably the cream of the crop, the mountain peak scripture of this evening. It, it's a, a phenomenal. Deuteronomy 5, verse 29. Oh, that there were such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever! Exclamation point. Do you see that? The Lord is crying out, oh, that there were such a heart in them, a heart that loves God, a heart that loves God, a heart that loves God. It's not just our obedience that God wants, he wants your heart, he wants my heart. Look at Deuteronomy chapter six, I quote this, probably almost every service we, we have here at the church, it seems like, here, verse four, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. Look at chapter number 10, chapter number 10, Deuteronomy chapter 10. The Lord uh, wants not just our obedience, my obedience, he wants our heart, he wants your heart, he wants my heart. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul? Do you understand this? The Lord God wants not just your obedience. You say, well, I, I'm obedient. Well, he doesn't just want your obedience. He wants your heart. It's, it's like my son. I don't just want his obedience. I want him to have a heart, not the attitude. I want him to have a heart. I want him to uh, desire in his heart to please his, his dad, me. And, and praise the Lord. God wants the same thing. He doesn't just want our obedience. He wants our heart. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 11. We're going to spend a little bit of time in Deuteronomy chapter 11. There's some verses here, a lot of verses. Verse 13 of Deuteronomy chapter 11. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart. Just to fast forward, verse 16. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived. Verse 18. Therefore shall ye lay up these, wor these my words in your heart. And then it finishes off in verse 19, and ye shall teach them your children. And you could study that a little bit more. You're getting the point. God just doesn't want your obedience. He desperately wants your heart. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 26. It's over and over and over and over again because we need to hear it over and over and over again. Sometimes in our mind we think that it's just our be obedience he wants. He doesn't just want your obedience, he wants your heart. Verse 20, or chapter 26, verse 16. This day the Lord thy God hath commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thine heart. It's not just doing them, but doing them with a heart, a heart that loves God. The Lord wants not just our obedience, the Lord wants our heart. Well, I guess I'll go out soul winning. I really don't want to, but I'll go. You know, I don't like to go soul winning. I don't want to go soul winning, but you know, since he commanded me, I, I guess I'll go. And so you go out soul winning with an attitude. Uh, well, I, I guess I'll read my Bible. You know, the preacher said, read the Bible, and I know I'm supposed to read the Bible, so I'm going to read my Bible because I was told to do it. I, I don't want to. I don't like it, but I'm just going to do it. 
Well, I, I guess, you know, I'm supposed to pray, and so I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray, Lord, thanks for this food. And you got an attitude. Sometimes I have an attitude like that. My point is I'm illustrating that that's wicked. It's wrong. And the point being, yes, you go soul winning, but your heart is not right. Yes, you read your Bible, but your heart is not right. Yeah, I, I'm going to go to church. I, I have to go to church. And I'm going to punch my ticket going to church. But as soon as it's done, I'm out of there because I'm not interested in the preaching of God's word. I'm not interested in singing the songs of God. Yes, I'll go. But your heart is far from the Lord. Boy, uh, I, 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 I'll do it. 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 But your heart is not with the Lord. The Lord wants your heart. Boy, did you see this morning at the 11 o'clock service? That Riley, young kid, 14, they haven't been coming very long. And uh, man, praise God, 14. His dad texted me this week and says, yeah, my son just finished the Bible for the first time. Amen. I said, really? And I mean, I never challenged him to read his Bible. He read his Bible cover to cover. And he said, yeah, and he's starting to read it again. And I talked to him, he's like, yeah, I read my Bible. And he's like, happy. And you know what? I'm happy, he's happy about reading the Bible. It's not because somebody twisted his arm and he didn't have a bad attitude. He's got joy in his heart. He has a heart for God. Uh, that Rachel this morning, you know, that, it's, it's a long story, but in the early bird service, she trusted Christ as her savior yesterday. Came to church and uh, she had to, get, to, if you would have seen her trying to get up those stairs, uh, she has some serious disabilities with walking right there, trying to get in the baptistry. It was painful for her and she did it. She came out of there smiling from ear to ear. It wasn't that she had to get baptized. She wanted to do it because she loves the Lord. She was right here after the service and she was smiling and not only smiling, but crying, crying. The Lord's working on her heart. That's what he wants. He wants your heart. That chance uh, came to my Sunday school class, not chase, but chance. I want you to get that right, Brother Jay Hudson, uh, baptized chance this morning. But he came to my Sunday school and he, he got up after, he said, Pastor, man, that was fun, learning the Bible. Wow, there's so many interesting things in there that I didn't know. And at the end of it, he wasn't like, man, I made it through your Sunday school class. He was like, woo, glory, give me more. He delighted in the law of the Lord. Boy, Brother Jerry, you, you rejoice my heart. For about five weeks, he comes up to me and says, Pastor, I want a job. Pastor, I want a job. I want to do something at the church. I want to do something at the church. And, and me as a bad pastor, sometimes I forget. And I will forget until the next day I get there. And as soon as I get there, there's Jerry waiting for me. And he says, Pastor, I want to work. Pastor, I want to do something. What do you got for me? And I'd forget about it again. And he's patiently, Pastor, I want to do something. So finally I figured out we need the trash taken out after service. And so I said, Brother Jerry, you know what we're missing here at the church? Right after the service, I need you to take out the trash. And you know what he did? He smiled. He was happy about it. Then today, he missed the bus going home, stayed here all afternoon. Praise God, one of our church members saw him here. He had taken out the trash and took and got him a bite to eat. But that heart, that joy, that be, look, just taking out the trash, he said, that's what I want to do. I want to please the Lord. That's glorious. Uh, the van riders this morning, uh, uh, there was a guy named Tommy who'd gotten one of our gospel tracks. And I talked to the uh, Joseph who talked to the bus driver and said, that you got to go out of your way to pick up this Tommy to come to church. Didn't hear one complaint from the bus drivers. And I watched after the 11 o'clock service, him getting the gospel from Brother Chris. You're giving him the gospel. Tommy. And you know, that happened because some bus workers uh, spent a lot of time going early to, out to pick people up for church and spent a lot of time in the afternoon doing that. They do it because they love God. They have a heart. You know, the offering for Elizabeth City. And I'm thankful, you know, uh, people came up and said, Pastor, I wanted to give to it. I want to give to it, not because I have to, but I want to give to it. Not because I demanded it from a pulpit. Because I said, you scoundrels who won't give to Elizabeth City Baptist Church and you knuckleheads who don't care. By the way, I don't think that, amen? But I, I certainly didn't say that. I don't think that at all. But boy, our church, you're filled with people who say, hey, praise God, I have an opportunity to reach a city for the cause of Christ. And this morning when I came because of my mistake last week, not the cards, I had many people come up and say, pastor, we want to give, we want to give, we want to give. Praise God for that heart. Boy, prayer, we pray not because it's required, but because we have a heart for God. This is the end, really. The Lord wants not just our obedience, he wants 
our heart. So I ask you this. This is the end. Will you, will you give the Lord your heart? Maybe he has your heart. I hope he does. But if not, will you give the Lord your heart? Remember a man, and sometimes we as Christians are like this. You know, we've been saved. Maybe you got saved at a young age and you don't realize the blessings you have living for the Lord. The blessings of the Lord that maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. But I remember a man, maybe got used to it, but the Lord began to work in, I remember just the attitude, the attitude, the attitude. I'm not going to do it. And the stubbornness, the rebelliousness. I just don't care. And that kind of Christianity is miserable. How do you know it's miserable? Been there, done that, wrote the book, and I don't want to be there again. I want the Lord to have my heart. A lady, <laughs> a lady, I'm tired from running from the Lord. I'm tired of fighting. And that dear lady begins to give back her heart to the Lord. I love you, Lord. Nothing's off the table, Lord, whatever you want it is, uh, whatever you want, want for my life, I'm willing to give you, Lord. If it's taken out the trash, I'm willing to do it, Lord. Nothing's off the table. You know that lady? Joy, happiness. Does the Lord have your heart? If not, tonight, give him your heart. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. It's a glorious truth. We could spend hours more in the Bible.